On the 30th of July 2014, people from a small village of Malin in India woke up to a harrowing view of their neighbors buried under a 7 meter peak of soil mass. This was caused by a landslide which happened to a hillside adjacent to their settlement. The landslide was triggered due to a burst of heavy rainfall that happened in the area. The heavy rainfall continued way after the catastrophic failure, deeming the rescue effort difficult if not impossible. Sadly, this event led to the loss of over 150 lives and some of the bodies were never recovered from the landslide. Slope failure is a phenomenon in which a slope collapses abruptly due to a weakened self-returnability of the earth under the influence of rainfall or an earthquake. In other words, slope failure occurs when the external loads or the weight of the earth's mass is greater than the shear bearing capacity of the slope to retain its equilibrium. My name is Clemens. I hold a master's degree in civil geotechnical engineering and welcome to Geotechs with Clemens. We are surrounded by natural and artificially made slopes and geotechnical engineers have to guarantee their stability for the safety of the public. Slopes collapse in many different ways depending on the earth's material composition. Most natural slopes are stable and the forces are in equilibrium without the influence of external forces and natural conditions. Slopes get destabilized in two main ways the reduction in internal shear or the increase in external loads. For example, human activities can affect slope stability by overloading the slope. For example, the increase of waste in the building of reservoirs, undercutting the slopes, for example, the construction of roads, quarry, mining, and another common man-made influence which is deforestation, that is like vegetational removal or cultivation and plowing of slopes. On the flip side, natural hazard, for example, prolonged rainfall on unprotected slopes and the rise of the water table increase the soil mass's poor water pressure and directly affecting the soil's shear strength parameters. In particular, it decreases the effective normal stress of the soil mass that acts between the grains and hence the frictional resistance is reduced. This leads to a gradual or sudden reduction in the bearing capacity of the soil and as a result in landslides. Now that we have established some of the natural triggers and the artificial triggers of landslides, let's go ahead and discuss some of the common landslides. Landslides tend to occur in two forms, that is, rotational and translational slides. Areas with homogeneous materials like fill and clay are highly likely to experience rotational landslide, which is characterized by a failure surface that is curved inwards and points outwards, and the landslide mass is approximately rotating around an axis transverse to the slide movement and parallel to the surface of the ground. The movement is usually associated with shear failure of the ground with its three-dimensional geometry being spoon-shaped. The head of the displacement material may move almost vertically downwards and the upper surface of the displaced material may tilt backwards towards the scarf. A rotational slide will eventually stop propagating as the stress equilibrium is restored by the mass movement. The most common slide on a global scale is the translational slide, which can occur in all types of environments and conditions. Theoretically, this type of slide may progress over considerable distances if the surface of rupture is sufficiently inclined, in contrast to the rotational slide, which tend to restore its slide equilibrium. Translational slides commonly fail along a geographic discontinuities, such as faults, joints, bedding surfaces, or the contacts between rock and soils. Landslides may initially be slow, damaging critical infrastructure and disrupting communication and power lines. In some cases, however, they can gain speed and become life-threatening. They also can dam rivers, causing upstream flooding. In the United States, Landslides are one of the most costly natural disasters. A recent estimate of the total annual cost of landslide damage is in the excess of 1 billion 
in a human cost averaging around 1,000 fatalities annually. Geotechnical engineers play a pivotal role to ensure the stability of natural and artificial slopes. They are tasked with understanding and recognizing potential slope failure surfaces and coming up with mitigating solutions. Understanding how natural forces behave allows geotechnical engineers to adjust plans as necessary, ensuring the slope can withstand long-term pressures, climatic conditions, and geological events without movement or failure. Depending on the project, Geotechnical engineers are responsible for slope stability and landslide hazard analysis. As part of site investigations, geotechs measure the topography using various industrial measuring equipment. Moreover, it is extremely important for geotechs to understand the composition, the profile, and the mechanical behavior of the investigated slope. Geotechnical engineers conduct on-site and laboratory tests to determine the strength parameters of the soil using theoretical equations and sophisticated computer simulation programs. The engineers can assess the conditions of the slope and predict the potential critical slip surfaces, therefore developing solutions to stabilize the slope. A well-inspected and thoroughly studied site can reduce the cost of stabilization Geotechnical engineers select slope stabilization techniques based on the feasibility, economics, and environmental sustainability. The most commonly used slope stabilization techniques are categorized as follows. Slope stabilization using geotechnical techniques can be achieved by the flattening of the slope, eliminating part of like the soil or the rock which is weak, eliminating load from the top of the slope and therefore reducing the shear stresses on the critical plants. As mentioned earlier on, the occurrence of water on a slope can lead to devastating results. Huge efforts are made to lower the water table and reduce water infiltration in critical slopes. Slope stabilization using hydrological techniques can be achieved in different ways. The commonly used technique is the installation of surface and subsurface drain pipes and therefore reducing pore water pressure. There are other chemical techniques that can be adopted. For example, the use of thermal techniques such as ground freezing and heating methods. The most common and visible stabilization techniques are usually mechanical. Mechanical stabilization techniques increases the shear strength of the critical plane of the soil mass by external means. Slope stabilization using mechanical techniques can be achieved by the use of grouting to increase the shear resistance of the slope, by constructing retaining structures such as concrete gravity and cantilever walls, constructing lime and cement columns. Another technique which is easier to use is by the human activity, that is, by planting shrubs and grass to reduce soil erosion. This is very critical because it reduces the direct infiltration of water into the slope. It should be noted that most of these techniques are implemented in combination with each other. For example, a single project can utilize geometrical, hydrological, and mechanical techniques. In conclusion, it is easy to overlook all the effort put forward by geotechnical engineers to provide infrastructure and keeping the public safe. This video only scratches the surface on how to mitigate this slope instability problem. I will be producing more videos that explores and takes a deep dive into the technical aspects of this problem.